Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 FM 90. A very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chizito. On Spectrum tonight, Uganda declines in the latest World Press Freedom Index. How bad is the situation and what factors could be leading to this decline? Uganda has dropped 43 places to the 139th position in the press freedom rankings, according to a report released, uh, released recently by Reporters Without Borders. A report released today by the Human Rights Network for Journalists indicates that in 2011, up to 107 cases of physical attacks against journalists were documented, doubling cases reported in 2010, which stood at 58. Uganda is ex explicitly mentioned in the pub uh, publication Press Freedom Index 2011-2012 as being one of the countries with the most dramatic fall in press freedoms. One of the 179 countries on the Press Freedom Index, Djibouti, Malawi, and Uganda, so the biggest drops. The drop is being attributed to an, an increased government crackdown on freedoms and the response to the uh, walk to our protests. Journalists who have covered the walk to our protests and the rallies called by the activists for change have reported being intimidated and singled out for attack by police and plain clothed security. It has been widely reported that Isaac Kasamani, a photojournalist with daily, uh, the Daily Monitor newspaper, barely survived a bullet as he took pictures at an A4C rally, while several other journalists reported injuries. The legal regime in Uganda continues to curtail media freedom, with journalists being charged under draconian laws, including those long nullified by courts. The conditions under which journalists work and the lack of unity among them has also worsened the situation. Human rights activists are now expressing fear that if the current trend is not brought to halt, journalists will continue to come under attack, an issue that may shrink the freedom of expression and that of the media. Now, government has often argued that Ugandan journalists must stick to professionalism and stop being taken up by propaganda and what government says are lies by the opposition. So tonight, we try to analyze the state of media freedoms in Uganda, taking into account two reports that have just been published. Our guests tonight, Mr. Haruna Kanavi, Executive Secretary of the Independent Media Council. You're most welcome, Mr. Thank Kanavi. You. Thank you. We're also joined by Ms. Grace Natabalo, Program Associate at the African Center for Media Excellence. You're most welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by Mr. Geoffrey Wokulida Sebagala, coordinator of the Human Rights Network for Journalists. You're most welcome, Mr. Sebagala. Thank you very much. Good evening, listeners. Haruna, let's stop look at this report. A jump or a drop from 107 cases uh, to 107 cases from 58 in the previous year. What caused this dramatic jump? Yeah, it is very obvious uh, for... <coughs> those who have been following the trends in Uganda. Uh, one thing we must realize is that uh, press freedom does not stand out on its own. Uh, press freedom and democracy, they are bedfellows. So if one is lacking, definitely the other cannot exist. <coughs> Over a period of time we have seen that uh, there hasn't been uh, the realization of true democracy or real democracy in Uganda which includes people holding accountable their leaders in different forums. So whenever this challenge is faced by them they resort to the crude methods. So what we saw last year and which brings up this uh, dramatic trend, in fact there is something interesting is that uh, you are talking of 107 yes. cases from 58 previously. which include physical attacks and the number of the physical attacks I think takes the lion's share so why because after realizing that uh, the opposition in my view that has resorted to other methods of airing out their discontent and the media is giving them platform. So what do you do? Either you box the media or you confiscate the camera to deny them that opportunity to show people and also to deny the other side the opportunity to express 
its view. So what we should be looking at is whether we have what you call grounded democracy. Theoretically, it might be there. We have a constitution which guarantees us all these freedoms. But what about the existing laws? What about our own appreciation of this democracy? For example, if I'm in this studio and I'm with my colleagues, do they look at it as a debate or a fight? So if they have this mentality that uh, if I'm arguing over something and we have a disagreement and we have to resort into uh, fist fighting, then that means they have not realized the importance and they do, do not also tolerate what I would call decent views. Right. So in the process, you have this kind of scenario. Well, we'll talk about your parallel between uh, press freedoms and democracy at some stage. But Geoffrey, we see, and I'm looking at your log here, your booklet that you published, the report, most cases, well, a big number, disproportionate, largely not large number of uh, cases were reported in April and May during the walk to work protests. Some people would say the government is being responsible, the media is giving a voice to the opposition, we're bent on anarchy, and the government has to gag the press. What's wrong with that? Eddie, um, I think I, I would like to also um, re echo what Aruna said. You know, the rights really, uh, if you talk about freedoms or rights, none of these rights really are independent. Every right is interdependent. If you're talking about democracy, press freedom is a cornerstone which really audits what is inside the democracy. And when you look at the assembly, people are trying to express themselves. When you look at um, the right to life, when you look at every right or freedom, it's, it's independent. One feeds the other to make what they call democracy. So looking at the government's actions, especially in April and May, the government has actually President put it right several occasions last year when he referred to the media as saboteurs. What does that mean? The media is being viewed as a nothing to do group in this country. They don't want development. Yes. But what's wrong with the media to audit properly higher investment which has taken... Well, the people were building a hotel on the top of the yes. They used to do flowers somewhere in Kawem. This is now it. they're building a five-star Yeah, this is where people need to know. This is high. They shifted from green to green. From to green to that level. give us a bit for hotel. Go on. Yeah, and when we want to analyze the trend, we want to ask where is the investor? Who is the investor? Problem 7 is actually, he has been talking about jobs, creating jobs. But, yes, how many uh, companies do we see collapsing? which have employed as many Ugandans before the IRs and the one, those ones that are being um, promoted. Yes. Look at nice uh, plastic. James Mluan. James Mluan. Yes. He actually nearly uh, <laughs> screamed the phone. So what, what, what was the correlation? What's the problem? We're looking at why shouldn't we, if you're talking about jobs, why don't we first save those that are collapsing, yes. then put new jobs? Yes. So if the media comes out with, to analyze the trend, why favoritism really is at hand? Favoritism. Why are we looking at protection from the executive, the IR? How about other business? If the media cannot be allowed really to audit properly, we're not talking about only on uh, investment. We're talking about economics, environment. We're talking about environment, democracy. You can name it. This is our work. In fact, we are not like doctors. Journalists are doing a constitutional mandate. Yes. Doctors have no calling. I mean, they want really. Uh, it's not like a service. What is it? The, uh, doctoring, like medicine. Yes. It's a. Uh, it's a job. For us, we are not in a, I mean, we are not, this is not basically earning money out of journalism. We are doing a service too. You could do it for free. Yes. What we are looking at is if such a right, which is a cornerstone, yes. can be undermined. Yes. People are not allowed really to show the true picture of an event like work to work like last year. Yes. Well, what is that really government is trying to protect? If police know that they are doing the rightful thing, why would they look at the media as an enemy? Why 
don't say you could get us who are taking photographs of if they are doing wrongful actions. So you're saying that when the government shuts down the media, they really are shutting down freedom of expression. Definitely. Not necessarily journalists. Not necessarily journalists. journalists. Not necessarily journalists. Because when you shoot at me, when you rough me up, you delete my f uh, photos. You denying the my perfect. father who is in Europe, Yes. The right, the right to know what transpired and what's going on in this country. All right. I mean, basically, to use an old adage, uh, you know, you, they're basically shooting the messenger. The message stays the same. The message stays the, the same. Messenger. Grace, talk to us from the Africa set of media excellence. Let's try to look at some of the other countries that you monitor. Is this trend unique to Uganda or does it happen in other places? So we should just accept it. Oh, thank you. This trend is not only unique to Uganda. There are quite a number of countries. Some um, I can't mention off head. Go on, go on. Um, most African countries are seeing a decline because uh, af after the uh, Arab Spring, a lot of uh, riots broke out in Egypt, in a few areas elsewhere, and all this time the journalists were trying to portray what's happening on the ground. The government was trying to curtail their freedoms. We have the issue of online media. People are, are tweeting, Facebooking, but in countries like Ethiopia and Eritrea, you can hardly send a message out without the government, you know, filtering it. So the situation is not only unique to Uganda, but... Well, you mentioned the Arab Springs. Those are places where revolutions are happening. Yes. So where there's a revolution, there's a crackdown on the media. Yes. Well, we look at that in more detail at some stage. Listen as this is Spectrum on Radio, and tonight, Uganda declines in the World Press Freedom Index. How bad is the situation, and what factors could be leading to this decline? You'll be able to call in later uh, to contribute to this discussion. Harun, you said where there's democracy, there's press freedom. Where democracy is curtailed, press freedom suffers as well. Yeah, we, we have democracy here, well entrenched. We Elections every five no, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you, you can have, uh, some people have said that we have selections, not elections. Uh, it depends on which side of the road you are. Uh, but uh, yes, we have had uh, regular elections. We have also, you should also add that we have had, I think, uh, <coughs> Uganda leads in a number of political petitions we have had in court this year alone. I think we have seen something, last year we have seen something like about uh, 10 members of parliament yeah. being <laughs> thrown out of parliament. What does that mean? We have also seen a cabinet where you have the uh, quite a number of ministers either being forced out of cabinet or the public is pointing fingers at them and to the extent that even the parliament has refused to appoint the parliamentary appoints committee some ministers who are questionable so what does that show you because you say we have democracy yes we might be having a semblance of democracy. What so, do you mean? We have elections every five years? Something. Is the winner who takes it? Definitely, definitely. But uh, we have uh, observed elections. We have seen elections. In some of the, the, the cases, if I, had, I read very well that report, it refers to cases where journalists were beaten covering elections. Yes. Why? If it is a good exercise. Why don't you want the people, as my colleague Seba Gala say, the auditor to audit you? Let the public know what is happening. But why are you chasing journalists away? We also had cases during the NRM primaries. What did we see? I have never oh, seen the ones in Nambole. No, forget about the ones in Nambole. Before, oh, the ones in other places. before, before, before Nambole. Well, we saw movie style scenarios. Not only movie style. I have never seen an election where people hold axes and they want to hack each other. Maybe they'll go to the forest. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, when you combine all these factors, by the way. You reach a conclusion that uh, as Ugandans, I think we need to go back and reflect on where we are and where do we want to go. So if we are talking of elections, I don't think that there would be people crying foul every time that have been rigged, the petition court, then you find that the court is uh, ag uh, agreeing with them that yes, there was buying of uh, votes, there were 
rigging, there are all these factors. So that means we are not yet there. We might not be like Ethiopia, we might not be like Eritrea, but if the benchmarks are the same, where we want to grade the European countries, when we talk of democracy, and we say that we are also part of the international community, then definitely we must accept that these are the standards where we want to be. Right. And in my view, we are not yet there. We're not yet there. Jeffrey, I'd like you to talk to us, give us some snapshots from that report. But before you do that, Grace, some people have said that general, some journalists have become activists as opposed to... Uh, uh, you know, professionals. Some have gone to parliament, but some, even in the media, they become activists, politicians, and other things. Yeah, well, there has been that debate of uh, distinguishing, uh, differentiating between journalism and activism. But um, well, journalists are people, so everyone has their own point of, point of view. But I personally wouldn't, if I was still a journalist, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't want to put my. I wouldn't say I am in a, a manila supporter or. And if this is supporter, as journalists, we are supposed to distinguish our, you know, our where we fall. We are supposed to keep that separate from our work, so to right. Yeah, I, I can understand where people are coming from. There, there have been a few cases, though. It's um, yeah, you can clearly see it in a few reports here and there. But, but when you talk about walk to work, when they begin to beat up people, they don't ask them what is your party card looking like mm. before they begin to hit them on the head or whatever. As yeah, long, well, as, as, long as you walk. <laughs> <laughs> if they're in the field, what do you expect them to do? And you can't tell who supports which yes, party or not? you cannot tell that. All they have to do is just uh, relay what they see on the ground. So you're basically, yeah, I mean, most uh, cases came through walk to work. Are you saying yeah. these people didn't want, not want certain scenes reported? That's why they hit her, especially yeah. police. Police was the main culprit here. Yes, if a police officer saw a photographer aiming the camera at him while he's whooping someone... He doesn't want that to be no. relayed. So the, the next minute he goes for the journalist who has the camera, deletes the pictures, beats him up... And Runs after him as well, a cat where and chasing a rat. Jeffrey, like give us some snapshots in this from be, this Before report. I give a, snap, a snapshot, uh, you talked about uh, the work to work. When you look at um, the return of Dr. Kizabesi here from yeah. Nairobi, yes. when President Seven was swearing in at uh, Kololo, yes. and Kizabesi was, was coming from Entebbe, it's one of the, okay, that was the event where we saw many, cases. most cases came from that. Of journalists being beaten up? Being beaten. Where, in Kololo or where? No, along oh, Entebbe Road. Road. Shot at, beaten, con confiscating and vandalizing their equipment. But it was just really a return. I mean, people How are How do you explain that? Analyze that for us. Explain it to us. You know, when it is, of course, still being a, a giving, a, of course, um, what happened. One, people who were at uh, Kololo. Kololo, when you look at the mammoth, uh, whatever. You are, you are trying to tell us that uh, the entire crowd was bigger than the one in Kololo. How can you say such things? I'm saying the truth. We are all... Uh, the we crowd. watched... In and TV. Yes, police tried to disperse. Ah, the so that, that annoyed them. That it annoyed the police. They know one that such things relied on television. Of course, that's what this was on one of the reasons as to why police was hungry. Why? Because their boss was at, uh, at Kololo with a large crowd. With a large, a large crowd, but the, the other one was larger. We don't know about that. We're not yeah, but you see, whether we, 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 uh, me, I'm not so much concerned which who had a bigger crowd because uh, I remember this kind of talk also. Well, but it could have annoyed some people. Yeah, it has been annoying people. I was trying to 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 tell you a story where uh, two of my colleagues had problems because they wrote a story when President Seven had a rally in Kololo. So he even had to respond and say, I went back and measured. With an it, yeah. Uh, with a foot ruler. Yes, you remember <laughs> that. <laughs> foot ruler, yeah, and the space to me indicated that within this amount of space you could have this amount of people. How can you say that? But, but So it is not about anyway the, the, the crowds and whatever, but it's about the principles. If you enjoy the cameras to relay what you are doing in Kololo, why don't you think that the Somebody. other people also have the same right like you? But they don't have a good agenda. Some of them don't even have a vision. It is not you to determine the agenda and the vision. Everybody has his own vision. Even you yourself, you, I think you have a vision. One for my family. family. Yeah. Not for the country. Which is, which is, which is a vision. <laughs> one man which is a vision. Uh, no one should tell you a lie. 
one man cannot have a vision for the country. The vision is built by the people themselves. That's why we end up in those moments. But I want to go back very quickly to the other thing which you you, you posed to, to 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 my sister here. Yes. That uh, journalists are, uh, are like activists. Yes. I think that some is, of them. Yeah, that is a tag which they try to place on you as you try to bring out the issues. So if I'm an activist, and we should grow from that, there is no law which bars a journalist to be a supporter yes, of FDC. Well, but it should not come into your Let me tell you, work. which bars from you being a supporter of FDC or NRM or DP? What you must be aware of is your code of conduct, that when I'm delivering my work, do I do it in a proper way? It's like a doctor. Is there a law which bars a doctor from treating uh, 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 somebody who broke into his house? No, they're just, they're only supposed to keep professional ethics. That's For instance, true. As journalists, that's what we are also supposed to do. Right. We have seen partisan papers if all a, over the world. They if are it's there. a blood drip, they give you a blood drip, not me. Yeah, definitely. Like a doctor. <laughs> well, this is Petra Radio, and we're going for a break. We'll be back. Do stay tuned. <laughs> Special fares to the US, London, China, and India with extra baggage allowance on selected flights. To book your flight, contact your local travel agent or call us on 041 900 or book online at qatarairways.com slash UG. Qatar Airways, world's five-star airline. Terms and conditions apply. John Mike and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage, and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. So many people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper and also help friends, seeing potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He's just who he is. Special. So here's to one like John, who made a difference. You enjoy Nile Special, the rich, satisfying taste from the sauce. Nile Special. You've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Stanwick Bank. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. Uganda declines in the latest World Press Freedom Index. How bad is the situation and what factors could be leading to this decline? Our guests tonight, Mr. Harun Kanavi, Executive Secretary at the Independent Media Council. Miss Grace, also a veteran journalist, used to work for a newspaper called The Chariot. Some of you who are older will know about it. It was one of a kind. One of a kind. You need to say to be like, Miss yes. Grace Natavaro. Maybe he'll bring it back. Miss Grace Natavaro. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's something to look forward to. Ms. Grace Natavalo, Program Associate at the African Center for Media Excellence, and Mr. Geoffrey Wokulira Sevagala, Coordinator, Human Rights Network for Journalists. Grace, can you talk to us about some of these episodes? For instance, in this report, 
they mention a someone who wore, wearing a WBS TV jack, uh, jacket who shows up and then there's a scene around Mulago. Can you talk to us about that? What what was it? And he was being shielded by police and he was not a TV journalist. Talk to us about that. Yeah, according to accounts from a number of journalists that I managed to talk to, they say they did not know this individual and some of them were saying that uh, apparently security was placing a few sources within the media fraternity just to spy on the journalists that were there. Someone is planted by security apparently. Yes. He's not known by the He doesn't even come from WBS. No. But he's wearing a flag but jacket. But he is wearing a flag jacket. In broad daylight. Yes. To spy on journalists. Yeah, apparently. And where he comes from, no one knows. But he's right there with a camera filming. What purpose would that serve? Well, I... Maybe listening in on journalist conversations, I don't know what exactly it would serve, but... Well, you say you no, po police has uh, its own department, which is supposed, I think, covertly and uh, clandestinely to, 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 to film and, and whatever. They have been using it. And uh, sometimes they would call people and then uh, play the footage to find out. But that's okay. But the problem, I think, with that particular scene, one, there is unethical conduct of police yes. in this case. But there is also a criminal element in it. What is criminal? Impersonation. Oh. Impersonation is a crime. Yes. If you call yourself what you are not, it's one of the crimes in our penal law. Yes. And ethical when you read the I think the, the, the code of conduct of the police. Yes. I don't think they are supposed to act in that manner. Yes. But on the other side it was also intended to use it against the media, yeah. to portray the media in a bad way. That you are, you, you are, you are, yes. Because this man wearing this jacket, WBS TV, apparently was blocking the police from arresting Chiza Vesje. Definitely. So they wanted to say that the media is getting involved actively. So it, it, it was kind of like a staged uh, act. Oh really? But did you investigate it or are you making wild allegations? Where did the man come from? And where did he disappear? He disappeared from the, to, to a police vehicle. He ran nearby. into the police vehicle. And he was put by police? Up to today, to Riagumanawe, who was on the scene, until he was transferred, I don't know where he is now. He's still in Kampala. He's still in Kampala. He was in charge of that area. He has never told us, including the journalists there. They are, I, I don't think anyone was ever called to write a statement. What, no, what, what, happened, the what, what happened about uh, Timothy Sibasi of the WBS General Circuit was hungry at the scene. Uh, I received a call from him uh, towards the end of last year. That particular scene, yes? Yeah, that same particular scene. And uh, I was saying police was uh, summoning him to go and record a statement for, insult for assaulting somebody. I, I asked him, don't go. Let them come and pick you yes. at WBS. Yes. Uh, if you have a case to answer, then we shall stand with you yes. in the course of law. That's where I stopped from. They never followed it they up. They never followed it up. Because you, you stood up for your rights. Yeah, we told him, yeah, don't go. You see, moderator, my, my concern is that these people are supposed to keep law and order. But if they also start to behave in a criminal way. Really? I'm telling you, impersonation is a crime. But you're not sure they were actually impersonating anyone. What was he doing? You put on something which you are not. You he claim that you are ID? from WBS. Everybody thinks that you are actually when you are not. Even the management of WBS, they this, say, this they have never even seen... So where did the jacket come from? They, they have never even seen this Maybe guy closer to, to, to their gate. <laughs> <laughs> He's never received a salary from that place. In fact, if they also printed the, 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 the jacket, even that is also a crime. It's forgery. Grace, tell us about this unity among journalists. There's some people say some journalists work for journalists, you know, for the mid, for the, the, the industry. Other people are sitting on the fence. Sir? Well, disunity among journalists. Some people say the media is deeply divided. Some people, people like you, are fighting for the industry. Other people are watching from the sidelines. Does it contribute to this kind of abuse? Yeah, the fact that we don't have one voice that speaks for the journalists, it's uh, quite a big problem. We had um, the Uganda Journalists Association, which kind of broke up into two.
unit na Uganda Janice Union so most Janice don't know where to go I'm glad that uh, Mr. Sebagala is helping out with the human rights cases but as far as the other two organizations go we do not see a lot of work there is no unity there is not one place where we can all go and seek refuge and say let's sit here and you know talk about these things everyone seems to be working on their own is it because the numbers exploded in the past we had one television station one radio station and a handful of newspapers now we have 200 radio stations I don't think it's about the numbers numbers I guess we just don't trust each other enough or maybe we put too much politics into our Joffrey when you do this work does the government press come to stand with you for instance well um, I, I, I still uh, actually I wanted to respond to just give a snapshot yes. before I, I come to that because actually it's something that I skipped uh, when you look at the report for my colleagues who are in the studio the cover yes uh, which has the shrinking and sinking. Here comes the regional police commander, Michael Mugabe. Michael Mugabe, who was uh, in charge of Kampala North region. Yes. Police invited journalists to go and cover the wrongful eviction of people who were purported to have encroached the Ubij swamp. Yes. This police officer, a senior ranking officer, roughs up journalists because police was doing things that are unlawful like what they undress somebody in the religious swamp in the, the religious swamp is that at night or broad daylight in the broad daylight and the journalists were taking photos beating this guy who was not even armed with even a, a stick like this when the media was capturing this this gentleman went mad they roughed up journalists beating uh, them up the officer you see actually he had the camera. camera maybe he was protecting it from harm <laughs> flying storms or something my dear doing when it when you look at the uh, face he's putting on is not like protecting well he's looking away from the camera maybe he's you smiling can, at the camera he didn't even know there was a journalist actually who had a camera Clearly. Who, photo who photographed him yes so he was actually so surprised to see himself actually discovered it presents a number of issues Yes. Not only for last year, but that have kept uh, kept on, you know. Like we have more than thirty journalists who are battling out with cases in court. Yes. They are perpetually kept in court for more than ten years. Why? What do you expect really? Why? To make life difficult for them? What? We don't know the interest. We don't know the interest. We don't know the interest. Okay, so this missed yesterday. The courts are fair. They are, you know, just. Yeah, but do you know that uh, James to Mr. Justice is slow. Of, uh, the observer he still has a pending case. Secretary. And I stood as a surety for him. And every time I have to call on him to see whether he's still in Uganda, because if he's. Oh, you have to check. No, if because you stood surety. Yes, I, I'll have to pay. But the case is still pending in the courts of law. Grace, how about these journalists whom you say in this report you claim are taken in bec uh, against, you know, versus laws that were struck off the statute books? Does it happen? Is it reality or is it fiction? So it's reality. We have, uh, until they struck the sedition law, yes. we had a couple of journalists still charged under the same law. And then we have, uh, what's it called, the sectarian law, which is still pending. And Sure, Mr. Kanabi is still fighting that in court. Yes. Um, which other there is also the uh, publication of false news. Yes. There is a CBS journalist in PG who was arrested. He was charged with the uh, publication of false news, which was not filed in 2004. Right. It took us time and money to challenge that in the same court. Where oh, this journalist the court had not read the laws, and they were charging this money. The law, the law, the law books are, are no, have not been edited. They've not been whited out. So you, you find that all the laws of 1958, the penal code, the, po the police officer who is in uh, Mpiji here, which yes, is around uh, 30 kilometers away from Kampala, such a, uh, a penal code, whatever is still there. Let's talk about the proposed press and media statute, the proposed law. Is it a good thing or not? Why, why are you pro opposing it? No, this, the amendment, actually, uh, Mr. Kanavi has some, the way actually he has caught, uh, quoted verbatim yes. the objective of the, 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 the bill. Why but do you oppose this law? Because that's before it actually comes in, you know, the bill seek of the zealous control over the media. It was it's to it's to 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 at some stage because yeah, we went to do other things. We have the entire stage. We, we, happy, we are happy that. Uh, <laughs> 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 
bone. She has also actually uh, uh, seen it all anyway. That um, you know, uh, mis uh, misappropriating uh, government um, equipment, you know. But at least you know, uh, it gives you um, a picture, the attitude, the motive. Attitude. Yes. You're saying this is a bad law, and the government that you claim is tormenting the journalists is bring a bad law. A, ba a bad law really to overzealous control, overzealous control the media. How does it control the media? Once you want, snap one, if you want to register, yes. You must, uh, like, now what, what we're talking about, if you want to operate a media, a uh, newspaper. You have to have a minimum capital level. Yeah. And directorship. You know, you have to show a number of things. And at the same time, you have to have a guarantee. You give a, uh, put um, um, an assurance yes. to the government yes. that this paper you're going to manage is going to be 100%. Uh, it's so not to stick to, to, to that really uh, reason for its registration. Yes. But the media really trends change the, the coverage of issues. So today it's the environment, tomorrow it's medicine. Tomorrow it's the same, the, the different thing. So you, you look at those things and, you know, when you give me a license yes. on everything, it means you have the same power to register me or to withdraw my license. So you think it's a bad law? It's one of the things that you've also been talking about. If you want to register a crisis journalist, why don't you entrust that really with uh, the, the body you have put in place like Independent Media Council? Right. You see, Mr. Moderator, it is not only being bad, although there are still proposals uh, which were brought forward by uh, Honorable Kavakumba when she was still Minister of Information. Way back. But uh, it shows you the attitude and the acceptance of the leadership we have that people must be let free to use the media. You already have laws which are stringent. In the Penal Code, 1995, they came up with uh, the Press and Journalists uh, Act. Yes. Now, when you look at the amendments, they are not the proposed amendments. They are not intended to create more space. They are intended to shrink yes. the space. So wh why? 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 Why is it so? President Museven is on record so many years ago yes. where he said that if I can balance my budget, yes. you pressmen, you are in trouble. You will face it. Because so of foreign what, donors. What, what does that show you? Right. That the attitude to allow a free and independent media in the country is not there. That's why you find that even the actions, you already have the laws, which have been also declared that they are unconstitutional by the Uganda Human Rights Commission, they still exist. But again, you want to add in more clauses which still tie the media. Let me ask, I wish to be corrected by uh, any listener who is listening. President Museveni has gone out to invite investors. Yes. In all sectors. Have you ever had him inviting investors in the media? In Rwanda they invited them yesterday. No, 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 we are talking about Uganda. Yes. I'm not talking about Rwanda. Tell me when President Museveni flew out and said, yes, here are the investment opportunities. You can invest in the media and allow people to criticize my government. All right. I've let's never see. seen it. Let's hear from our listeners. This is Spectrum on Radio and on number 0414 348 111 0312 260390 0312 261390. Nicole, please tell us your name and where you're calling from. I'm straight to the point if you can. Hello. Good evening, Edmund. Good evening, your name? I'm AM as DJ. Yes, AM. Thank you for seeing your fellow journalists. I want to salute them for their articulation. Trevor Gala plus Kanazi, Mr. Kanazi and the madam. Uh, I want to start from Mr. Kanazi's question. The, he has been asking the president that he, does, he doesn't encourage me, uh, investors to go to media. And how many foreign radios do we have? Foreigners own the radios. Look at uh, uh, Monta was bought by, uh, by a group, nation group of companies. So 
my issue to our brothers and particularly, particularly the young journalists some of them are a bit emotional some of them are op opposition they, they have instead of balancing their paper or reporting they, they some of them are opposition and for us as consumers we need to hear from both sides so what what matters important is just to give the information as it is but not just changing it on your best on your interest thank you Spectrum, hello? 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 Yes, sir, your name? Good morning. Good evening, I'm sorry. Good evening. My name is Jorere. Yes. Uh, I just want to be to the gentleman in the studio, but uh, I agree with them some of the issues they have raised. But uh, we also have to consider so many factors that are bringing in the human rights abuses which actually should be tackled on both sides, not government and the, the, the now on the area of the media particularly. The media actually I would consider them that they are most marginalized in this country, certain to teachers and the rest. When you look at the media houses today, they are the most exploited lot. And the the human rights people, if you are fighting for rights of these uh, people, uh, categorize them uh, first by the area they are working. And then the, the, the issue of them being harassed on the street and so on can also come in. But look at them when they are arrested. Uh, how are they treated? Then even their workplace. You, you know, this is double human rights abuse. And uh, I, I would like to see some of the people who represent actually the gentleman. Taking this thing matter as seriously. Spectrum, hello. Hello. Okay, let's get back to the studio. Geoffrey. <laughs> Your response. Uh, the AM says, uh, you know, you have the national media group, and yet you say there are no foreign investors in the media. Um, I will leave that to Haruna. Uh, but uh, I can handle uh, the second question um, yeah. of uh, journalists actually being uh, the most marginalized. marginalized. But the I entirely agree, and uh, we have commissioned another research into this to understand the causes of uh, whether it's true or not. And we expect to release that as we celebrate our our year, this year's World Press Freedom Day. Yes. Just to bring out what are these uh, these issues, uh, talking about employment and a number of things. So um, it has been talked about uh, for many years. And uh, for us, we believe that I think we need to do a scientific research to ascertain really the reason for whether this is true or not, and then also find ways of uh, uh, addressing it. Right. But of course, it, it is coming out uh, because <coughs> one of the cases last year we recorded were several journalists who were laid off without pay in uh, one of the papers. One of the newspapers. Uh, one of the papers. Yes. And at the same time, many journalists go unpaid. We have received cases. Yes. But because uh, we don't want to be seen as trying to fight uh, the media itself yes. and uh, being on a, a number of fronts, yeah. we have what we do is we write to them, to the media. Houses, the media owners. owners. Yeah. We have received this complaint. Could you please actually address it? And they have responded to many of those who have written to. So really, um, we shall really come out with a uh, clear finding. Not speculation, but we want to some, have something really scientific. All right. Yeah. Uh, Grace, talk to us about uh, this issue of, uh, as the journalists go out to cover some of these things, they could go to war fronts. Do they have flak jackets to deflect bullets, for instance? Do they have protective gear? I instance. think the riots last year in um, immediately after the elections were an eye-opener to so many media houses. I've seen uh, quite a number of journalists wearing the flag jackets, but uh, those are so, um, the main media organizations like Daily Monitor, The New Vision, and some TV stations, but you have several radio stations that hardly make Which that much. Which a bullet yes. proof jacket? How much I'm does told really it's cost? about 5 million, between 3 and 5 million shillings. One jacket? One. And how many reporters are in each newsroom? <laughs> Not well, they could have one. It's not a worst situation. Well, but but you bullets I think somebody says he was shot at. Yeah, a capital radio reporter was shot in the leg. 
big. Yes. And I've already seen that. Yeah. 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 So when you're covering rafts, you need bulletproof jackets? Yes, if you can get one. But but still, I think uh, there is a law which restricts the importation of... Uh, but the way the police behaves means that you need a, a, a body, bulletproof body kind of like body. suit <laughs> because uh, we have uh, a journalist. But you've also seen the way the police dress <laughs> when they're going uh, to cut to Yeah, to why right. shouldn't the journalist dress in the same way? Go on, Mr. Kanavi. I don't know, I don't know, but uh, this brings me back to the state as a guarantor of uh, the safety and the human rights of every individual in this country. We are talking of uh, the media. Yes, there are quite a number of issues which intentionally, in my view, the government has not looked into. Like what? They are employment laws which governs <coughs> all companies that operate in Uganda. We have not talked about that. You're talking about a minimum wage? Yes, we, 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 we have foreigners who earn more than nationals. What's wrong with that? But the vice president said a minimum wage would cause... Would cause Unemployment, people would be fired. Employment, so is that is sad. another issue. So who is going to save Ugandans from that? Mm -hmm. You talk of the protection. It's not only with the media. What about people? I have seen people demonstrating who work in some of these uh, Chinese companies' farms. Yes. The way they are treated. Even in government. No, no one gives them the protection in government alone. Cases. So there, 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 there are quite a number of issues, which takes me back to the issue of Sebagar, and I like it. The auditing. Audit so when, when you poke your nose into that, then you become an economic saboteur. Mm -hmm. When you look into an investor who is abusing the rights of your fellow Ugandans, who is not abiding by the rules of the game, set up by our parliament, which we spend a lot of money to elect. Even to and then you bring out these views, then the president would say, you would, would come out and say, you are an economic saboteur. So it takes us back to the responsibility of the state. Those who take up the leadership, they must know, and I think very many of them know, that they have that responsibility. And it squarely lies on them to ensure that all Ugandans are protected, wherever they are. Two, I want to respond quickly to the gentleman who said that uh, a foreigner bought in a monitor and whatever. Yes. I, I want briefly to share with him what, how, the way, how the monitor went. Yes. Because it was owned by Ugandans. All of them. All of it. All of them. 100%. Seven of them. Mm. They were Ugandans. Yes. What happened? The, the government, which was supposed to protect them, support them, it was the first to squeeze them out of business. Cancelling adverts in 1993. Yes, they denied them adverts. They depended mainly on the sales of the paper because of what they used to write. And people used to like it. So the government sabotaged So them. finally, they found themselves in, in, in a box. Yes. What do they do? They invite Aga Khan and say, come, why don't you buy shares in this paper? Aga Khan brings in his money, they get shares. What happens next? The paper was closed down for one week because they had written something. That becomes subversive. Which, no, 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 no. Which the government thought that it was wrong. So what did the, the, the NRM spokesman The write? government thought it was simply an opinion. Yes. What did the government spokesman say, Mr. Ofono Pondo by then? The NRM spokesperson now. The former journalist. Yes. He wrote a piece. And it was very interesting, where he said that, I think Aga Khan will think twice between his investments in Uganda and the Daily Monitor. What did we see eventually? Our friend Onyangobo was exiled. No one should tell you he that was he was transferred. No, he was exiled and given an amorphous kind of uh, like assignment, an editor extraordinary something. It was a very long name and the okay. title, very difficult to, to, to pronounce. Yes. And then uh, like the and intro sucking, of a story. Sucking yeah. others under yes. the race. So some people like uh, Andrew Mwenda, Uma, Valikowa, forget about the Andrew Mwenders, those are early. They, 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 they were thrown out. Uh, the late, the later, the, Kevin, Aliro. Kevin Aliro started the went observer. and started the Observer. So what kind of investment are you talking about? When the Nation Media Group started the TV here, the Nation TV, wasn't it closed for almost like how many months? Well, I think three. All right. Yes. What does the future look like? Let's talk about the future, Geoffrey. Um, the future of Ugandan 
journalists really yes. Yes. is not clear. We do not have guarantee that the attacks on journalists are going to stop. Yes. When you look at the trend since 2009 to where we are, 2012. We, the curve is going up. We're just getting some concerned. We need to find solution. We need One, to pray hard. Not only praying, but we need to develop uh, preventive, uh, preventive measures for journalists really on how to protect themselves and how it must behave. How would we do that? I would like you to ask the same question, Grace. How do we look at the future and how do we protect ourselves, journalists? Well, like Mr. Sivagala said, it's, uh, in, there are no guarantees. All we get are apologies from the police today and the next day they are at, at, uh, doing the same thing again. So I think for the journalists, we need to get together and plan our way ahead because the government is not, they won't let us be. So you're, as you're appealing for unity among yes. the journalists. There's one enemy that you need to confront. Not an enemy, but anyone who attacks you and your enemy wants anyone who wants to destroy you. Well, let's go out right now because our time is up. Thank you very much, dear dear Thank guest Harun Kanavi, Executive Secretary of the Independent Media Council, Miss Grace Natabalo, Program Associate at the Af African Center for Media Excellence, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Wakulira Sevakara, Fighter Man, the coordinator of the Human Rights Network for Journalists. Thank you very much for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond Chizuto. Spectrum will be back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English. Fellow Ugandans, the United Nations has declared that access to the internet is a universal human right, along with access.